What's up, y'all? It's Cortez Mac back again with another episode of Cortez Mac TV. Oh, I did like a straight jacket right there. <laughs> Hopefully, y'all had a good week. Mine was good. It was straight or whatever. A lot of good things popping off. Stay tuned for the On The Way Up Atlanta Season 2 Reunion hosted by your boy. It's dropping in July. The trailer is available on their page now, and it's super lit. I need y'all to go check that out. You will love it, and it's going to be... The best reunion of 2021. I can't, I, I no cap, like for real, the best. So I'm ready for y'all to tune into that. Hosted by your boy, my first big hosting opportunity, and I definitely need y'all to check it out and support. So beyond that, today y'all, we have part two with my homegirl Talia, aka the Closet Ratchet, aka Talio. She's got so many aliases, so many talents, so many gifts, and so much to say. So I need y'all to definitely stay tuned for part two with her. We're gonna go into, you know, how she maneuvered and how she, you know, kept her momentum going after she left the shade room, how she got into music and what her goals are going forward for the rest of 2021, along with one of the most important roles that I think that she has, and that's the role of mom so i can't wait for y'all to see part two it's super dope if you haven't seen part one definitely go back and check that out it is available it's out it's free go watch it like what you got to lose all right so before you get into that interview i do want to cover some news this week and first up it's time for a celebration i can barely sing i could sing but i'm saving that for when i get televised <laughs> in the news this week, y'all, we got to talk about Juneteenth. It is now a, an official holiday, thanks to President Joe Biden. All right. He signed into effect the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act. On June 17th, he enacted this new act. And so Juneteenth is now Federal Day. Now, this year, it just so happens to fall on a Saturday. So a lot of people are celebrating today. I am going to an event tomorrow that my homegirl Nash is, aka Natasha, is putting together. I got an interview with her available too. Go back and watch that. See, I got content, man. I am like, I'm the plug really when it comes to content. I got so many people that I want y'all to meet and go back and see that I've talked to because everybody is connected, right? I digress. Getting back into the news, Juneteenth is an official holiday. It is a cause for celebration. Candace Owens hating ass has something to say again. So she came out saying that it's another way um, for segregation to exist in the United States and that she is going to continue to celebrate on July 4th. One, nobody asked you. I mean, and two, nobody asked you. She always got something to say and then she feel bad when black people don't come to her defense when she gets attacked as a black woman. You can't have both sides of the coin, sis. You can't, well, you can, because that's the point of having a coin. But you can't have your cake and eat it too, sis. Well, I don't like that phrase. Because <laughs> I, if I have cake, I will want to eat it. Candace, I just don't like you. I don't know what it is about your spirit, but it just does not sit well with me that you are just always so anti, anti-black, and I don't get it. You are black, you know the struggle, and you have a platform, and you choose to say things that are so problematic. If you never see this, you know, which, I mean, you probably won't until I hit it big. But if you ever see this, you know, I'm open to talking to you and dialoguing that really understand your perspective. But as of now, you just ain't it. You are not that girl. You not. And I don't know what will make you that girl, but a clear mind and a clear conscience. You need to get right. Oh, like, I feel like I just read her. Damn. Oh, my first read on Cortez Mac TV. All right. Last up in the news today, y'all, we got to talk about... Lala and Carmelo. I'm so sad that what I thought was an impenetrable marriage. I thought they were going to be married forever. Even though I did think they were separated. Did y'all, anybody else think they were already kind of doing their own thing? I could have sworn that they were. But anyway, I thought that they were going to be one of those couples that had their, you know, understandings with each other and was always able to work it out, a la a Will and Jada. But Lala is fed up and she done. So she's filed for divorce. And now Hollywood Unlocked reported that Carmelo Anthony may have fathered some woman's twin sons. She doesn't want her name out, but she says that they met last year. And, you know, they started off as friends. 
And he told her, you know, I ain't trying to get with you like that. And then next thing you know, bam, she got twin boys by him. So maybe that's the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, proverbially speaking or metaphorically speaking. Lala, maybe that was just it for her. I think, didn't Carmelo have another baby on Lala? Am I not mistaken? My voice is, I feel like I'm going through like adult puberty. My voice is doing so much today. But Lala, I wanna pray for you because you are somebody who I, you know, I idolize, not idolize, I don't idolize anybody. But Lala, I respect a lot because of the way that she's come up in the game. You know, she started with hosting. I saw her on TRL. I saw her on, um, remember MTV had that little version of 106 and Park. I can't remember what it was called. She was on that. She was on so many different platforms that I aspired to be on when I was her age. And she took advantage of all of them and now she's acting. You know, she put some of her family and friends on. I really, really love Lala. And I think that she has done a great job to, you know, pave her own path and develop a, a you know, lengthy and respectable career. So I want her to be happy because of how much she does you know, on the work side. I definitely want her to be happy on the personal side. So I wish her well. I want Carmella to end up on top too, but it's giving mess. <laughs> it's giving mess. It's giving prayers to the Anthony um, family. Yeah. So next up y'all, part two with my girl Talia, AKA the Closet Wretched, AKA Talio. I just love saying that name, it's so fun. Y'all try it. See, it is fun and you did it. I love, see, that's why I mess with my audience because y'all, y'all get me, y'all get me. So part two is up next. In part one, if you missed it, we talked about, you know, her inspirations to do music, her family's reaction to that, some of her prior experiences with work and where they got her and what skills she gathered from them a little bit of her time at the shade room, along with, you know, some more personal details of her life that are going to be followed up on today in part two. So if you missed part one, go back and watch that. But part two, we're gonna pick up with her talking about her transition and learning that she was pregnant and how she adapted and what she said she was gonna do at that moment. Here it is. No, for real, here you go, stay tuned. Okay, yeah, so, I had found out I was pregnant. I was like, I'm just gonna grind. And it was April 2016 at that point. Mm -hmm. Literally that February, like two months before, I promise you, like it was God. I heard a voice clear as day and said, register LLC. So I did. I happened to have like an extra $300. And I went on LegalZoom and I started Talia Oliver and Associates LLC. I love it. And I started designing my own t-shirt. I've always loved designing t-shirts. Like, oh, yeah. Let the freedom ring or the chopper will sing. Uh, <laughs> Malcolm X has entered the chat. I love, the, I love your shirts. Mm. I love everything that you do there. Yeah, I definitely Thank have you. support. It. Oh yes, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, back then, actually. My shirt was like my little flagship shirt was Obama for a third term mm -hmm. because <laughs> I think like Donald Trump had like Hillary Clinton and then had just started announcing mm -hmm. you know who that they were gonna be running and I was like no we want Obama so I mm -hmm. made this shirt Obama for a third term but anyway find out I'm pregnant two months later mm -hmm. and I was like wow okay I must have been a reason for that so. I started being more intentional with my t-shirts and just started to grow my business and you know by the time I was like five six months I started writing my book because by then you know this baby is cooking inside mm -hmm. of me and I'm really having time to think about legacy and what I want to provide for my child thinking about what type of mom I want to be. And I was like, I, I want to be a boss ass bitch. I don't want my son to want for anything. Bitch, 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 bitch. Yes, for Nikki. This whole coming back with the 20 
2009 mixtape and people still bumping it today going crazy i'm like she will forever be relevant yes nikki forever i was screaming when yes. i saw that she did that yeah i'm so happy it's on spotify now like <laughs> i ain't gotta go to youtube and listen to itty bitty piggy or slumber party i'm lit i'm so happy Hello. yes okay we <laughs> off but nikki we love you we love you nikki <laughs> but um so yeah i had my t-shirt business and had my book and I basically was like I want to be a, a boss like that's what I want to do I saw all these cool celebrity moms juggling all this stuff even though you know later I learned they have teams to help yeah them. yeah I was like well, I don't have teams so I don't have to do as much as I can while I can so the last few months of my pregnancy I you know not only was I writing my book and doing my t-shirts I was doing interviews I was interviewing so many celebrities getting drops like I'll never forget that summer was the first time that I did media coverage mm -hmm. at Essence Festival. Oh. I got a drop from Oprah. Oh I, my god. Uh-huh. Um, what a celebrity. <laughs> Should I met Oprah? Iconic. I'm on my way y'all. I'm on my way. Iconic. Honestly. The only thing that they have done to this day to top that is interviewing Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. They ain't top of the Oprah job. That shit no. was iconic. Um, oh my God. Yeah, I I uh, got drops from the entire cast of Power. I met Miss Tina Lawson. Mm -hmm. My mom was with me too during oh Essence. So we met all these people. We, I did interviews. Like It was just such a magical time. And my son was in my belly when I'm you know, having all these pivotal moments in my career. And so by the time Avon actually was born, I just was so motivated. I was like, wow, it's not as difficult as it seems. Mm -hmm. People like to make it seem like uh, being a parent is just this terrible waste of time and like it's hard. It is very difficult, but you know, with any any difficulty that you experience, leaning into it and just not resisting is the best thing to do. There are days that suck, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Especially, you know, he's a toddler, mm -hmm. he's crazy. Tearing stuff up, running around. Toddlers are crazy. <laughs> Zero out of five stars, do not recommend. But, um, yeah, like I when he by the time he was born, I was just so ready to do everything, cause I was like, why not? Like, mm -hmm. you know, my my job at Shave Room at the time afforded me a, a little bit of flexibility, more flexibility than most people had at their jobs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I, I just hit the ground running, <laughs> and it has not been a smooth transition at all but you just gotta trust the process lean into it and just do whatever so now i've gained my footing i'm three years um this july will make three years that i've been an entrepreneur full time and i've definitely found my footing like the pandemic definitely helped oh yes um because it slowed everything down my CMOS, you know, I started my CMOS business. Come on, CMOS jail. That fell into my lap. I was not trying to start a CMOS business, but I ended up doing it, and it has allowed me to fund the things that I'm doing now, so. That's dope. Yeah. Multiple streams of income, like I said. Like I said. So, staying on um, the topic of motherhood, but kind of pivoting a little bit, you know, you have a son who's being raised amidst, you know, a lot of uncertain times and a lot of unrest in our world. Do you, and I know that he's young, but are you anticipating having certain conversations with him? And I hate that you have to with a black son, but I mean, are you anticipating having those moments with him when you prepare him for this world? Of course, I think about that every day. Um, just, I, I don't think that I'm going to sugarcoat anything. Like, my son is a Scorpio also, like, through and uh -oh. through. He's a Scorpio sun and rising. Mm. So he's like, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with horoscopes and zodiac shit, you should read your horoscope from your rising sign. Because you probably identify more with that. Do you know what your rising sign is? I think Cancer. I'm a Cancer. That's why you like me so much. Anyway, so yeah, he... 
I intuitively feel that he's not gonna be phased by the shit anyway. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I just believe in being honest and transparent. My mom was not as transparent with real world things. And I see how it, it affected me. You know, I was very naive about people and relationships, everything that comes along with people in relationships really up until a year or two ago. Oh wow. I've just been and that's another thing with being a parent, like it's a shadow work. You realize so many things from your own childhood get dredged up when you become a parent and you have to deal with it. You can either choose to deal with it or not and you can tell the people who don't deal with it, you know. They keep the cycle going a lot of times. They do and I'm not with that. So I said all that to say, I'm just planning on being really honest and upfront with Ava because I have been. I don't think that it's healthy not to be. Yeah, and I think he'll appreciate it in the long run. You know, me thinking about, because I was raised by a single mom, and so the moments that she was real and open and honest with me, especially after her and my dad divorced, those are the moments that I really, really appreciated more than anything because I was sheltered too. Mm -hmm. And she, at a certain point, was like, Look, let's just, let's call a spade a spade. And I appreciated those moments for her. I think he will too, definitely. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of time left and I feel like this has been just one of the easiest conversations. I love talking to you. I feel like it's just so natural, so easy. <laughs> but I wanna talk about what's next just for the Closet Ratchet in general. I know that there's more music on the horizon. Your content is just, fire everything that you put out is dope so what are your aspirations for let's say for the rest of 2021 what do you want to do <laughs> you're like what are your aspirations in life yeah come on miss america are to be happy. no beyonce pretty her oh my god don't <laughs> divide oh my god stay him no i'm just kidding <laughs> um no like i really just want to continue growing and evolving as a, a media maven. Like I love, um, I just, I love creating content. I love, you know how they say art imitates life? Mm -hmm. I like, that is why I love memes because, and like GIFs, <laughs> I know it's GIFs, but GIFs. GIFs. I love memes and GIFs because they are like literally <laughs> life imitating art or like the opposite. There is a meme, a GIF, for, for everything. every single emotion that you can feel. And like, I I love translating the human experience through content. Like, mm -hmm. it's so fun. And I feel like we all have different points of view. I have a Absolutely. really interesting point of view and way that I present information to people mm -hmm. in a way that they can, uh, you know, digest it easily and understand. So, yeah, I just want to continue growing. All these little, all these ideas and stuff. I have, I'm going to be a billionaire. Mm. I want to write for, um, I re like, what I really want to do. Y'all listening? Y'all listening? Is <laughs> continue, continue writing music and developing as an artist. And I want to be like a screenwriter. I have these ideas for, well, really scripts that I've been working on for like two, three years at this point for shows and movies. I want to write for Ryan Murphy, Shonda Rhimes, like, and I'm going to, like. I know that's right. I'm going to, this is gonna be a key when I do. All I'm doing right now is like binge watching all Glee. these shows. Glee, I saw you were watching Glee, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm watching, I'm on Glee now, but I all I do in between working is binge watch shows so I can study like the, uh, the structure of them. Okay. Do you feel like you, y'all, real moment here, we're gonna break the fourth wall, I just lost my question. Uh -oh. But I'm so enamored by that idea and I love how you have just spoken to assistance already, Shonda Rhimes, Ryan Murphy, and I feel like there's space for you to do that because you bring a demographic that I feel like a lot of times is ignored when it comes to television and film. You know, there's a lot of black, you know, actors, actresses, screenwriters, you know, directors, all of that. But I feel like there are 
I feel like you're just gonna bring a different perspective. Everybody brings a different perspective and yours is so unique that I really wanna see you in that space. I definitely do and I see you there. Thank I definitely you. do. So before we close out, we're gonna play a little game. Ooh, so, okay. uh oh, so we're gonna play one gotta go, all right? And I know you know how this works because you have dropped them before on yeah. your on your um, page. So, we're gonna go with um, because we focus a lot on music, we'll go with four musical artists and we're gonna go with music mommies, the mamas, the music, all right? Okay. We're gonna go with four famous mothers who have been killing the game, and you just gotta get rid of one. You ready? Okay, all right. So, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you. Sierra. Okay. I'm gonna give you J Lo. I'm going I'm across I'm across genres too. Okay. So you got Sierra, you got J Lo, you got Britney. I know this is gonna be hard. I was gonna put Beyonce in, but no, because she's always one that's like nobody will ever get rid of her. So no. So Sierra, J Lo, Britney, and let's go with. I'm going to throw a curveball in there. Let's go with Tiana Taylor. So which one would I get rid of? Which one would you get rid of out of those four? I don't know. I guess... Definitely not Sierra. CC stays. C squad all day. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. That's my girl. She's living a dream life. Oh, yeah. Oh, Granted, yeah. things may not be perfect behind the scenes, but... We could tell the energy there. Mm -hmm. She's, She's happy. She, she glows. Yes. Yeah. Um. So definitely not Sierra, not J Lo, because I live for J Lo. I don't care how much y'all hate her right now for this Ashanti gate. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'm still with J Lo. I, I ride for J Lo like a movie scene. And the sweetest that is my favorite J Lo song. I picture us together. Hey. <laughs> That's my song. I want to stay in this forever. Yes, we could go on and on I waiting for tonight. <laughs> so J-Lo stays, CC stays, you got Britney, and you got Tiana. Who you getting rid of? I don't know. Between them two, I don't know. Because I obviously, like, Britney is going through some stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Prayers for Britney. So I guess Britney would have to go. I, oh. I like Tiana. Damn, she said Britney's going through some stuff, so she gotta go. Damn, I thought that was gonna save her. I, I don't know, cause it's hard. I like Tiana, but I, I out of the four, I do identify with her less. Mm -hmm. But me too, and I hate that because she is so talented, she, and I love seeing her perform. But she is one of the best perform entertainers out mm -hmm. here. Like Killing she. It. When she be going in on the academies and people for not being recognized, she deserves to go in on them. She she's does. Talented. She's too talented to not be in a better spot. I feel like her, Tanache. Tanache. Yeah, they they definitely deserve more recognition and acclaim for what they're doing. And I Listen. I believe that it's gonna come as long as they don't stop. Listen, please do not let me get started on Tanache because I've been listening to him for like seven eight years. And I'm just like, this girl, I really want her to go write for Disney. Like, she mm -hmm. has some ballads that she could write for, like, The Little Mermaid. Like, shit, oh, like, yeah. all these movies. Absolutely, because she can sing. She's a writer. She's a beast with the pen. Like, every, a dancer, performer. She gives an all-around show, too. And I feel like she deserves so much more and people mm -hmm. criticize her for not having a lane i'm like that that's, that's good to me she's an aquarius she's yeah, not she, supposed to have lane. yeah she's versatile and she showed that and people criticize her for her versatility because they don't get her mm -hmm. but we get you here tonight yes. and um sorry britney it's not britney bitch today sorry, girl. <laughs> that is my time with talia <laughs> tell the people where they can find you on social media we plug the name so much that y'all if y'all been listening y'all will know but one more time well no again so you guys can follow me at the closet ratchet on instagram and tally o t a l l y o h h h on twitter and that's also my music name so you can find that on all streaming platforms 
and y'all need to definitely go check out 424 play today start with smoking down just go all the way down the list y'all y'all are gonna love it y'all are gonna love her and i need y'all to keep loving me stay tuned for who won the week it's next so who won the week this week y'all That's how I be doing on Zoom when I be wanting people to think I'm frozen. I just be like, <laughs> did it work? Did y'all think this, this camera had froze? The screen had froze? No. Yeah, so who won the week this week, y'all? Justin Bieber. The Bieber? The Biebs. I'm sorry, that's what they used to call him, right? Justin Bieber wins this week, y'all, simply for the fact that he is headlining the Made in America Festival. And, I mean, he's not even American. To have a Canadian running our shit. You know what I'm saying? That's some boss, that's some boss moves right there. So Justin, this is yours. Come get it. Come get it, Playboy. It's right here. All right? Now, with that, we up out of here, y'all. Thank you for tuning in for another episode. I will be back next week with some more. I'm about to switch up my format a little bit, so I want y'all to stay tuned for some changes to Cortez Night TV. But I think you're gonna like them. I think that you're gonna really, really like what you see because your boy has been working. So I appreciate y'all. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can come back next week. And you ain't even got to do all that, you know, searching and looking. You're going to get the notification to let you know that my new stuff is out. I appreciate all the love and support. It's Cortez Mac TV. Let's go.